Hey there, Sart here. Um, so I was working a lot yesterday on uh, on a, a Clash of Wills team that um, I thought could um, both hit the cap and finish the fight in, in 10 turns um, in anticipation for Gumi putting out you know some kind of notice that they were gonna fix the, the raised cheese issue. And Gumi did put out a, a, a news report finally actually addressing the issue. Um, however, um, what they said was, despite that the fact that this was an unintended issue, uh, where the boss can be KO'd instantly with abilities that revive the target, obviously it was unintended, um, it says here at the bottom, no action will be taken against the players for utilizing the behavior, and they will not be changing the behavior for the sake of keeping balance consistent during the duration of the event. Meaning, Gumi has just officially sanctioned our use of Rays to completely cheese this boss. Um, you know, I, I'm sort of, uh, I'm a little bit torn by the news because, you know, um, you know, I, on day one, you know, I went in and did a lot of, uh, you know, sort of like budget initial clear videos with like some different teams, just trying to help people out there that like to, um, you know, just try to clear level level ninety one, uh, level ninety nine with a fairly cheap team, and uh, and then it comes out that oh, you can just raise it and kill it, which you know. It, it, it's great. That means everybody has access to the level 99 rewards, and and that's fantastic. Um, it still made, um, it still meant that those people that wanted to do rank one, they still had to bring a strong enough team to hit the damage cap before they raised it and killed it. Um, but then there was a, a new exploit that was um, that was put out there, and, and uh, the the first. The first place I saw it was on uh, Comic Heroes uh, channel. Uh, he he showed he demonstrated this in, in a video uh, where you can effectively totally pacify the boss um, by by raising it while hitting the fifty percent um, HP lock, and that will effectively make the boss just do nothing for the entire fight. And you can just sit there, take your time, build up your morale, get ready for a big burst. And then as long as your units are, are strong enough to hit the damage cap, you're good to go. And honestly, um, if Gumi is going to say that that's okay, then that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to go with. And that's what I'm going to show you. So, um, you know, despite the fact that I, I worked, I worked really hard on this, uh, on this team that was going to get everything done. And, you know, I feel bad for other content creators that, that, you know, put a lot of effort into actually accounting for the AI of the boss when, in reality, you can just use this little exploit, and you don't even have to. You don't even have to bother. You don't have to build a tank. You don't have to build for any resists. You can just go full on damage as long as you can build morale. Um, you're good to go. And so uh, I'll show you the team. I'm still going to use the team that I came up with, um, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna use the the race exploit. And I'm going to show you guys how this works. If you haven't already seen it on on Comic Heroes channel. I'm going to show you how it works right here now. Um, <clears throat> so we've got all of our mods on. This is the team that I'm, I'm using. I'm doing a dark team. And uh, so pretty much the, the the same damage dealers that we had before, except um, we've, we've thrown Golbez in there. Um, we took out Kresnik and we put in Bulwark. Uh, Bulwark is going to uh, be our dark imbue for the team. Uh, he's also going to be a bit of a morale battery. He's not as good as Kresnik, obviously. But the nice thing is, since the boss doesn't do anything, uh, we don't have to worry about the boss building any morale against us. So it, it makes it a little bit easier to get your morale up. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's, it's kind of a silly little exploit, but honestly, I, you know, I am, while, while I'm a little, I'm definitely the kind of person that prefers the challenge and prefers getting in there and trying to figure out how the AI works and how to get around all the little things. I definitely understand that a lot of people out there um, just want to find an easy way to clear this and get their rank one. And I'm all for, you know, more people getting access to the rewards because I want more people to enjoy this game and I want more people to continue enjoying this game. And that's what it's really all about. So, you know, I, I, I've done my, my personal challenge of figuring out all the little exploits, uh, or sorry, figuring out all the little, um, you know, ways to, to get around the bosses 
uh, AI to get my rank one clears and whatnot. So this one's just for you guys um, to show you how we can fully exploit the raised cheese. <clears throat> Alright, so um, we don't need too much here. Uh, Sylvie, you'll notice Sylvie is dual wielding, um, and that's because we need to build as much morale as quickly as possible. Um, we just want to build morale uh, as much as possible in this fight to make sure you hit the morale score. Um, and her vision card has this sisterly bonds uh, ability, which does a morale gen every turn. And so normally it would just do 175 morale but if you're dual wielding there's a little um, a little trick where if you're dual wielding it will cast that ability twice so that gives you 350 morale right and so she's dual wielding in both forms we don't have to worry about bulk or anything like that um, honestly she can be totally uh, totally naked and that's fine um, I just left everything on her uh, that I had when I was doing my my original clear I just made her dual wield so that she procs that ability on her vision cards uh, twice um, I also have her vision card on Bulwark, doing the same thing, doing a dual wield. Um, if you don't have two of Sylvie's vision cards, hopefully you noticed in the news that Sylvie's vision card will be uh, in the Perma VC Select Shop, and you can buy it using those Perma VC coins. So definitely pick up another one of those. <clears throat> uh, Esther is, um, she's still going to be the like the the tertiary damage dealer on this one. Um, because obviously in my original uh, clear using this team, I had her as my tank primarily, um, just doing some, some extra side damage. Um, and yeah, you see she's still got all the resists and, and everything on there. Um, you don't need any of these resists. You can put whatever you want in those slots to make her, uh, you know, to bulk her up. She just needs to make sure she has chain cap and make sure that her killers are all maxed out. Uh, yep, maxed out on killers and LB damage. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, so, you know, she's, um, she's ready to go. You know, you could do more. You could, you know, if you have a, a better uh, attack helm, um, like if you have another one of uh, Ricard's uh, Dragoon helms, you know, you can put that on there. I only have one, and, and so that's currently on Chizuru. But Gloria's headpiece is nice, uh, so I threw that on her for here. Uh, Golbez, I, I wanted to... Um, uh, I, I wanted to feature Oliver at some point in, in one of my clears, but it just didn't work out. And so uh, to make up for it, I am using Oliver's STMR here in my Golbez build because since we're bringing Bulwark, Bulwark has a 30% instrument in peril. So Golbez can take advantage of that. If you don't have um, Oliver's STMR, you can use uh, Fryevia's STMR, the Frostblade Fryevia's uh, sword. And then uh, Sylvie will provide the sword and peril for you. And so, um, you know, lots of different builds you can do with Golbez here. Um, you'll notice everyone still has to be charm immune for turn one, because if, if especially for, um, for units that are going to have uh, morale gen on turn one, they especially need to be charm immune. Golbez doesn't necessarily need it, because... Um, you know, Sylvie can get rid of that charm immunity, but, you know, it's better just to leave it on there. All right, and then just Killers, Dazzling Demon is card for damage. Okay. Uh, Bulwark, again, dual wielding, using Sylvie's card. Otherwise, you know, he doesn't really need much. I gave him Treasure Memorial Ring for the turn one uh, LB fill. Okay. Pretty much same stuff in his Brave Shift form. Nothing shaken. He doesn't need anything special. He's just there to gym morale and to uh, supply the instrument in peril and the dark imbue. All right, Chizuru in her normal form. Um, she's full on damage because she doesn't have to worry about any kind of resists now. Um, gave her her own card. So I took out Cool Smile. Um, so for those of you that saw my previous video, uh, we kind of needed that vision card, a Cool Smile, in order to really get the damage past that damage cap. Uh, for this clear, we don't need it. And in fact, it would be useless in this particular strategy because we're going to do our burst on turn six. The reason why is because if you, when you do the raise, uh, the raise cheese on the boss on the first turn, you have to then wait for his buffs to to go away naturally because he won't do that, you know, that uh, that skill that reduces it by a turn. And so 
you know, you could bring Kaito on the team if you wanted to, to to reduce the number of turns. But otherwise, his buffs don't go away until turn six when you do this strategy. So keep that in mind. Uh, in Brave Shift Form, again, full on damage and full on killers. I believe she's maxed on everything. Yep. <clears throat> 300 stone, 300 reaper. 300 LB damage. So she's ready to rock and roll. Uh, Skies wielding the Empress's Celestite Rod for uh, for Morale Jin, so I obviously had to give her Honorable Rod Arts. I also gave her Tyvus's Spirit. Uh, in her normal form, I gave her Deathbringer. Um, this is just in case I I wanted to just uh, use this one because in my original clear, I needed to make sure that she was hitting the boss with uh, with Dark Element. There were some turns where um, I might not have been able to hit it with Dark Element with anyone else, and so uh, Deathbringer is a Dark Elemental Greatsword, and she can wield those innately. Esther supplies the 30% Greatsword in peril, so uh, very easy to slot that in for Sky here. Um, otherwise, she's just full on damage and killers. I believe she is also maxed out. I gave her another copy, my second copy of Chizuru's card. Again, if you don't have two copies of Chizuru's card, you can buy Chizuru's card in the Perma VC shop after this uh, coming maintenance. So both Sylvie's VC and Chizuru's VC will be available in the select shop after this week's maintenance. Um, so definitely pick those up because they're two very, very strong cards. So she is also maxed out on Stone, Reaper, and LB damage, ready to go. Um, I believe that's everybody. Yep. Um, so the only the only person on the team that's not maxed out on killers is Golbez, just because uh, he's a bit difficult to max on, on the killers on this one. So he's 200 Stone, 225 Reaper. Um, you could give him... Again, you could give him Fryevia's sword. That would give him an extra 50% Reaper. And then you could put a Stone Killer Plus in the Equip Instrument slot. Um, and, and who knows, that might do better for you. Um, the instruments have a slightly higher average variance. Um, and Bulwark's Instrument in Peril is 5% higher than Sylvie's 25% Sword in Peril. So, it, I mean, I don't know. It probably shakes out pretty evenly. But... Um, <coughs> I found that this was a good weapon because it also adds 400 MP to Golbez, which makes the modifier on his uh, on his meteor jump up by an extra 40 times. So, you know, that's that's definitely nothing to shake your uh, shake your head at. All right, so that's enough talk. Let's go ahead and get in here and see how we get this done. So there's all of our, our turn one morale fill. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just totally uh, cheese the hell out of this boss. So Esther's just gonna do triple bolting strike. Bulwark is gonna raise. Remember, you hit select target down here at the bottom. And then you're gonna click somewhere around the mushrooms on his back, and that should target Crumblier. all right? So the way that this works is think of it almost like you're trying to cap a chain with the raise spell. So you're going to start Esther, wait a second, and then tap Bulwark, and you'll see that the, the life bar will go down to 49% and lock there at the HP lock, alright? So we'll tap Esther, and we'll raise, there you go. And you see it even says overkill, so in my mind, what the AI assumes is that the boss has been killed, and yet it still has 49% HP due to the HP lock, and that's why it doesn't do any actions, because the AI is just, is just assuming, oh, I'm dead, so I don't need to do anything else. And so that's why the boss does it, he will not do anything from here on out. You can literally go as many turns as you want, the boss will never do anything to you. All right, so now um, Sky will need to... <clears throat> Start stacking her LB. All right, Sylvie's gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a bit of LB fill for Sky and then burgeoning defense to get that morale going. All right, Chizuru is just gonna do Eastern Wind, Strong Samurai, Staunch Samurai. That's again to help fill up Sky's LB. Uh, Golbez can go ahead and do Curse. Uh, you may wonder why are we doing curse <clears throat> if the boss isn't going to do anything to us. Well, breaks 
do add to the morale. So it is important to do brakes um, because that will add to your morale uh, morale bar. All right, we'll do jet black curse to get that started, and then abyssal quasar. Again, hitting it with dark element also uh, increases your morale slightly. So as much as you can hit it with dark element, the better. All right, so boss did absolutely nothing to us. Uh, <clears throat> we are in the clear. Okay, so now Sky is up. Oh, doesn't quite have her LB up. And that is all right. Okay, Bulwark is going to do Chirrup and Moogly Mixtape. <clears throat> Alright, Esther. Oh, actually, nope. Sorry, Esther is going to do her LB and hope that that causes Sky to drop at least one LB Crist. I think Sky just needs one. There we go. Alright. So get another stack for Sky. And we'll just do Clever Paladin Strike. <clears throat> All right, Chizuru can do, um, let's see, what are we going to do? I think we'll do, it, do the uh, Katana Imperil again just to make sure it's always up. And then we'll just do some physical and magic mitigation because I believe that should help with morale when you put up mitigations. Again, we're just looking for anything that, that helps generate morale at this point. All right, and then two more Abyssal Quasars. So now Esther can shift and just do a triple uh, triple shatter bolt. Actually, we'll do a double and then an energizing bunny so that she can do some more shatter bolts next turn. Um, Bulwark's going to shift. We want to go ahead and imbue everyone with dark so that gets some more uh, morale flowing. All right, Chirrup, Moogly Mixtape, and Shadow Serenade. All right, Sky needs a little bit more on her LB. I'm hoping that Esther will get that for her. Uh, Chizuru is going to do Stone Pulverizer. Again, hoping we generate uh, some LB Crists for Sky. All right, Golbez. Again, he's just going to curse and double Ruler of the Night now that he's imbued. Sky's got her LB, sweet. All right, so now she's fully stacked. She's good to go. All right, so now Paladin Sylvie is just going to come back. We're going to do some morale morale fill. So Elemental Petals, Elemental Vines, Paladin's Resolve. All of those generate flat morale. <clears throat> you can see we're getting pretty close to that 200%. We'll definitely be there by turn six. There's no problem with that. Especially since the boss is doing uh, literally nothing. Um, so yeah, anytime you've got morale skills on the morale bar, go ahead and use those, because those also help generate morale. <clears throat> All right, Sylvie. So we're bursting on turn six, so Sylvie's going to go ahead and do her LB here. It will still be up. Uh, all the buffs will still be up on turn six. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that one now. And yeah, we're just going to do, again, Curse and Double Ruler of the Night. Uh, Sky will, uh, let's see, what does she do here? Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and do her Severe Squall. That just puts up a slightly higher uh, Reaper Killer on herself, because Esther's is only 120%, but her self buff is, um, <coughs> her self buff is 150. So we'll put that up, uh, and then just hit the boss twice with some dark. Uh, Chizuru can... Um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and... <clears throat> oh, nope, actually. Ooh, I'm glad I caught that. So Chizuru's going to help with our morale building now. Uh, she's going to shift, because all we need is her LB on turn 6. We don't need it any other turn. Um, and we're going to do Dedicated Samurai Slash, because that builds morale. We have three physical attackers on the field, so we're going to get uh, 800 morale every time she casts this. All right, Esther can just do another uh, three shatter bolts to generate morale. <clears throat> uh, Bulwark's going to shift. We're going to set up our weapon in peril. Chirrup, Moogly Mixtape, and Bulwark's Blair. 
This is what does the 30% instrument imperil for Golbez. All right. And you notice I'm not chaining. Um, that's because, you know, there's a, I, I like to leave the boss with a few percent health just so we get one extra turn of morale gen after we've done our burst. Um, it's, you know, it may not be necessary, but it's just, it's sort of like a safety net. So that's why I'm not chaining because I don't want to do too much damage to the boss. All right, so you see the boss has uh, one turn left on his buffs, if it'll let me look at him. All right, well, you can see it. You can see it over his head there. There's only one turn left on his buff, so next turn is going to be our burst turn. All right. <clears throat> so now, Sylvie will do Cracked Stone on Sky. Sky is going to be our primary DPS. She's going to be doing the majority of the damage on this team. Um, and then Cheerful Paladin Strike for morale. So Sky is going to shift and do Tyvus' Spirit. Shizuru is going to do another dedicated Samurai Slash for the morale fill. Bulwark's going to come back into Brave Shift, do Chirrup, Moogly Mixtape, and Shadow Serenade, just to make sure the Imbue is still up. Alright, go ahead, Chizuru. Esther's now going to get ready for the burst next turn. <clears throat> Alright, and Golbez, again, we'll just do Curse. Uh, Jet Black Curse, and Ruler of the Knights. Oh, I keep forgetting to do the the, uh, the buffs. That's right, we'll do the attack and mag buffs there. And then what's the other one? Ah, uh, yeah, boost resistance to breaks. That's always good for morale. All right, so you see we're ready for our burst. <clears throat> boss still hasn't done anything to us. The boss is went from undead to actually dead. Um... I guess he's truly undead now, because he's he's dead, but he's not dead? I don't know. It's very confusing. All right. So Sylvie's just going to chain it up with Clever Paladin Strike. Uh, she's going to chain with Bulwark to ramp up the chain for us. Um, double Chicophony and Miscophony. Uh, Chizuru will LB. Esther LBs. Sky will shift. And LB. And Golbez will do Meteor. <clears throat> All right. Um, we'll go ahead and do our buffs again, just for morale fill. Alright, so everyone should be good to go. Alright, we're all pumped up. <clears throat> yep, we've got our dark element, we've got all of our killers. Alright, we should be good to go. Alright, let's hope we hit the, uh, let's hope we hit the cap on this one, huh? <laughs> be great if I did the whole recording and didn't hit the cap. Oh, damn, I killed him. <laughs> ah, ah. Wasn't expecting that, but I, I know I hit the cap at least. Woo, 2.7, there it is. That's, that's the best I've done, actually, with this team. Um, <laughs> all right, now let's just hope I built up enough morale. Damn, I did too much damage. Too strong. Oh, no! See, that's why that's why I didn't want to kill him. Uh, all right. Well, my bot, my team was too strong. My team was too strong. Um, all right. Well, <clears throat> so now you see the problem with being too strong with this strategy, right? Uh, so definitely leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room there to build. You, you need that that one extra turn of uh, of morale. So you know, all you really have to do, honestly, if you're if you're worried that your team is too strong and you're gonna kill it. Just do your burst on turn seven. Do your burst on turn eight. You can you can wait all the way to do your burst on turn ten. If you know you're going to kill it on turn ten with your burst, just take all the time you need. The 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 cheese. This raised cheese is so stupid. Just take all the time you need to fill up all your morale. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> it's really quite silly. But there is a team that can hit the cap for you. Um, without issue. You don't have to worry about resist. You don't have to build your tank. You don't have to do anything. You just sit there, build up your morale, and burst it. And yeah, easy peasy. Let's see how the damage shakes out. 
Uh, yep, Sky and Chizuru right up there at the top as expected. Um, Esther and Golbez. You know, my Golbez, if I had, um, I, I have never pulled a Dark Rain. I have yet to pull a single Dark Rain. I've got several Knights of Grand Shelts. I've pulled like three or four of those. But I have never pulled a Dark Rain. So I do not have uh, Dark Rain's TMR, that Magic Boost Plus. That is very, very effective on Golbez in situations like these where you have lots of turns where he, he doesn't necessarily need to do anything. And you can just sit there and have him boost for like three turns in a row. Um, that will greatly improve Golbez's damage. And I don't have that, so that's why my Golbez probably looks a little bit lower than what you may see on some other videos. Um, so if you have Magic Boost Plus, definitely slap that on your Golbez and use it because that will greatly improve his damage. But as you can see, we didn't need it here. Um, the rest of the team pulled up, uh, picked up the slack, easy, easy peasy. And uh, that's how we got this one done. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, if you like cheese, then this is definitely the strategy for you. Go get them. Go get your rank one. Um, as long as you got strong enough units, you don't have to worry about building for for to account for the AI at all. Uh, just make sure everyone's charm resist on turn one, and you are are good to go. All right. Uh, so thank you guys so much for following me, and uh, I will see you on the other side.